All right, today we're going to begin looking at the unit circle. And the unit circle is going to be a circle with a center at 0, 0, and a radius of length 1. Now, just in case you guys don't remember, I'm just going to label the quadrants here real quick. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, 3, and 4. So they start in the upper right, and they go counterclockwise, just to remind you. This is the equation of the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 0, since nothing is added or subtracted to the x or y in parentheses there. Um, that's what indicates to you that the center is 0, 0. And we're going to work on labeling parts of the unit circle. I have none of the angles or anything in this diagram here, just a basic unit circle and just labeling that each one of the intersections with the axis should have a length of 1 and any segment that you would draw that would be a radius would also have length 1. Okay, now there's different angles within the unit circle and I just have a little sample right here of the special ones that we're going to work with and was typically what would work with in a general unit circle. And these all have to do with special right triangles. Worked on that a little bit yesterday. Um, these are just multiples of 90 degrees. Whenever you work with the unit circle, the starting point is always going to be at 1, 0. And then you work your way around the circle counterclockwise. So the starting point is always right here. So this point is considered 0 degrees. If I get up to the y-axis, that's a 90 degree angle that that creates. If I come all the way over here, that's a straight line with where we started, so that would be 180 degrees. Another 90 degrees here is putting us at 270. And then when I get back around to the starting point, all the way around the circle is a 360 degree uh, measurement. Now, we're going to work with these. I'm going to give you guys um, each of these triangles separately just so you can see the different special right triangles. Um, but I do have all these markings that you're going to see here within each of the circles down beneath this. Um, but these just count measures by 30 degrees. These count measures by 45 degrees. And these examples count measures by 60 degrees. And remember, you start in this right side at the point one zero and you go counterclockwise each time. So here this is a 60 degree measurement. 60 and 60 would put you at 120. 120 and 60 puts you at 180. So these go around counterclockwise and then you add the multiples of these degree marks. Now we're going to just slide down here and I'm going to break this down into four different triangles. I'm sorry, four different circles. Okay, as we're labeling the unit circle before I get into this, when you have the points that we're going to label here, these have degrees, but they also have coordinate points. Um, as we do this, we learned with the special right triangles yesterday, uh, the x coordinate is going to be the cosine of the angle you're talking about, and the y coordinate is going to be the sine of the angle that you're talking about. I'm just using theta to represent the angle. So like if we find um, a 60 degree angle, on the unit circle, the x coordinate would be the cosine of that angle, the y coordinate would be the sine of that angle. And so that's what we want to keep in mind today. Okay, now as we start here, if you guys remember, I'm just going to deal with the points where the circle intersects the x and y axis here. Now, the circle's radius is 1, so to get to this point, this is just the point, 1, 0. This is the angle of 0. I don't have an angle here. So angle of 0 has a cosine of 1 and a sine of 0. Now, I just want to write down a little note here. The tangent of these angles is going to be opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate for each of these points. Okay, and so for 1, 0, if I do the tangent there, the tangent of this point is going to be 0 divided by 1, which is okay to do. So the tangent of angle measure 0 would be 0. Okay, now I'm going to come up here. This would be a 90 degree angle. 
and the coordinates at this point, we're not moving left or right, but we are going up one, that's our radius. This is your cosine, this is your sine of 90 degrees, and then your tangent of 90 would be the opposite, which is one, over the adjacent, which is zero. So the tangent of 90 here, remember we can't divide by zero, is actually undefined, or no tangent, if you will. Okay, over here, this is 180 degrees, going another 90. This would be the point negative one, zero. And the tangent here, we would have the sine divided by the cosine or y divided by x. So zero divided by negative one is zero. That's okay to do. So the tangent there is gonna be zero. And then finally, this point right here is zero, negative one and the coordinates, sorry, this is 270. And when you do the tangent here of 270, you would have negative one divided by zero. So this is gonna be another situation where the, sorry, I'm off the screen, where the tangent's gonna be undefined. Okay, now I'm gonna switch into the 30 degree angles. So again, you're always gonna start here. If I go up 30 degrees, I'm gonna mark 30 degree angle here. I'm gonna mark 30 degrees this side. This isn't every 30 degrees, but these are all gonna have similar points. So that's why I'm marking these. Okay, so this is 30 degrees up from the x-axis. This is 30 degrees up from the x-axis, 30 degrees down, 30 degrees down. These will all have the same um, sine, cosine, and tangent values, but they're gonna be circulated around the circle, rotated around the circle. Okay, so right here I have 30 degrees. This is 180, I'm gonna back it up 30, so this one would be 150. This is 180, I'm gonna add 30, so this is 210. And this is all the way around, which would be at 360, backed up 30. So this is a 330 degree angle. Okay, now to create triangles here, I couldn't do that with the axis, but I am going to here. Um, I'm just gonna drop a vertical line and you always wanna connect these with the X axis. Okay, and then just to kinda define the triangles there, there we go. Okay, each one of these is gonna have the same coordinates, but they're in different quadrants of the graph. So. If you guys remember the 30, 60, 90 from yesterday, um, the radius is one. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the short leg is half of that. So that distance would be a half. The long leg simplified to be radical three over two. So to get to this point here, the exact value of the cosine would be radical three over two, and the exact value of the sine would be a half. Now. Each one of these is going to have the same coordinates, but they're going to have different negatives and positives based on where they're at in the quadrant. So this one right here, this is the same thing. I'm still going over radical 3 over 2, but I'm going down a half. So at the 330, you'd be negative 1 half. To get over here, you're going left, that root 3 over 2, and then you're going down the 1 half. And sorry, I kind of wrote on this, but for that 150 degree angle, you're going left, root three over two, but you're going up a half. So all those points are the same there. They're just gonna end up with different negative signs. Now, the tangent of any of these, um, it's gonna be the same number, but it might be positive or negative depending on where you're at. So tangent, let's do 30 first. We would end up with the opposite, which is one half, divided by the adjacent, which is the radical three over two. Now, in terms of how we would do this, we would do the keep change flip. So it'd be one half times two over radical three. The twos cancel out. You do have to rationalize in that situation. So radical three over radical three. This simplifies to radical three over three. Now that's the tangent of 30. Okay. At the 150, the tangent of 150 here, I am gonna do 1 half divided by negative root three over two. 
So I have a positive divided by a negative. This should simplify to be a negative root 3 over 3. This um, 210 angle measure, I'm going to divide a negative by a negative. So the tangent here of the 210 is actually positive root 3 over 3. And when you get to the 330, oops, sorry guys, I'm not on the screen. Um, when you get to the positive 330 here, you're going to have a negative divided by a positive. So the tangent of the 330 is going to be a negative root 3 over 3. Pause this at any point if I'm going too fast. Okay, the 45s, you're going to start here. The 45s are right in the middle. Um, 45 is half of 90 degrees. So the 45 degree marks are going to be right in the middle, oops, sorry, sorry, going down the wrong line, right in the middle of each of these. All right, now I'm going to connect each one of these to the x-axis, making a right triangle. And so if you guys remember from yesterday, let me just kind of highlight the axis to define the triangles here. Um, these are what we call isosceles right triangles. The x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are the same. So this, when we simplified it, was the root 2 over 2, the distances for each of these. So for this point, this would be the 45 degree angle. And so we're going to have a cosine root 2 over 2, and we're going to have a sine of root 2 over 2. Now, when you get over here, this is 180. Or I could do 90 plus 45 or 180 minus 45, either way to get to that point. This angle in here, though, is 135 degrees. So your sign here, now I'm going to the left, so this is negative root 2 over 2, and I'm going up, so positive root 2 over 2. And then over here, either add 45 to 180 or 270 minus 45, either one of those would get you here. This is 225 degrees. And this is left for your x, whoops, sorry, root 2 over 2. And down for your y, so negative root 2 over 2 for that triangle. And then finally, um, either add 45 to 270 or subtract 45 from 360, and you're going to end up here. This is the 315 degree mark. Now here you went positive um, for your x, so you're going to the right, but you are going down to get your y, so this is negative root 2 over 2. Okay, now the tangent for each of these. Cosine is your x-coordinate, sine is your y-coordinate. The tangent, though, you have to do the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Now, every single one of these, you're dividing the same number by itself. So root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, this is 1. However, over here, the tangent of 135, you have a positive divided by a negative. So this tangent will be negative 1 tangent of the 225 here. This is going to be a negative divided by a negative, so this is going to be positive 1. And then over at the 315 tangent here, we're going to have negative root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, so this is negative 1. So it changes based on which quadrant you're in. Okay, finally, the 60 degree angles. So starting at 1, 0, 60 degrees is up about this far. If you're at 180 and you back up 60 degrees, you're right here. If we come down, this is a 60, and this is going to be a 60. Okay, so I'm dropping a vertical line to the x-axis. Basically what's going on here is each one of these angles, just like the ones we've done before, this is going to make a 60 degree angle with the x-axis and um, the inside of the triangle here. So that's what's going on. This is 60, this is 60, this is 60, this is 60. We're at different places on the circle. Like if I back up here, this angle between the x-axis and that radius, that's 60, or sorry, 45 here, 45, 45, 45. So that's why these triangles are all the same. Now, we already did the 30 degrees on the front. These are similar triangles because they're 30, 60, 90. This time, though, the short leg is the X, and the long leg is the Y. So this is a half. This is root 3 over 2. So here, cosine is 1 half. Sine is root 3 over 2. Now, this is a 60-degree angle. 
the tangent here um, is different than the ones we had on the front because here your opposite is the root 3 over 2 and your adjacent is the 1 half so opposite over adjacent you're going to end up with um, sorry radical 3 over 2 times 2 over 1 keep change flip and I just realized I'm not on the screen sorry about that um, the twos are going to cancel and so this just ends up being the square root of 3 so that's the tangent of 60. Okay, now 180 minus 60 here is going to put you at 120 degrees, or you could do 60 plus 60 to get to that next one. This is going to be negative 1 half and positive root 3 over 2. So your tangent here of the 120, you're going to have a positive divided by a negative. So this will be negative square root of 3 if we simplify that. Down here, you're going one half to the left and you're going down root 3 over 2 to get to that point. Cosine's negative one half, sine is negative root 3 over 2. The tangent here, oops sorry, forgot to tell you guys the angle here. This is 240, 180 plus 60 is 240. And negative divided by a negative here is going to give you the square root of 3. And then finally this one, 60 more degrees from the 240, is going to give you 300. This is positive 1 half, because you're going over 1 half to the right, but then you're going down root 3 over 2. And the tangent here, you have a negative number divided by a positive number, so this is negative square root of 3. Okay, so when it asks for exact values of these, what it's looking for are coordinates of the point or the tangents that we wrote down. So if I say I want the sine of 30 degrees, I want the y coordinate of that point. And you might have to flip back to the front paper or you can look at the paper on this side if you want to think about it. The y coordinate of 30 degrees would be 1 half. Um, and if you want to do cosine 45 degrees, you're looking for the x coordinate of that point on the graph. So for that should be root 2 over 2. 60, this is all in the first quadrant. The sine of this is just the y coordinate of that point, which should be root 3 over 2. So if it's asking for exact value, it wants to do in radical form what this is. Okay, now the 240, let me slide this back down just a little bit so you can kind of see the graph. So here was the 240. So the cosine of that, if you want to cosine, you want the x coordinate of that point. So this would just be negative root 3 over 2. Sine of 180. Okay, let me pull the circle down just a little tiny bit. The 180 is right here, and that was the point negative 1, 0. So the sine of that is still the y coordinate of that point. And what we got there is actually just 0. And then 270 is right here. And so if you guys remember the coordinates of that point, at 0, negative 1. So if I want the cosine, that's the x coordinate. And that's also going to be 0 for that one. Okay, you guys might want to flip back over or look at these. The tangent of 30, these were on the front. And that is going to end up being for an exact value root 3 over 3. The tangent of 45 is 1. This is the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate for each of those points. So find your 30 degree y divided by x. Um, tangent of 60 degrees is going to end up being the square root of 3. We did that on this side of the paper. Okay, tangent of 90. 90 degree angle is the point 0, 1, so you have 1 divided by 0. This is undefined. Tangent of 180, that is the point negative 1, 0. 0 divided by negative 1 is okay, so the tangent of 180 would be 0. And then 360 is back to the point 1, 0, so we would have 0 divided by 1. This is okay, this tangent is also zero. Okay, now on the homework assignment, I just want to show you guys real quick. Let me flip to an example here. If you guys turn to the back side of the homework, I'm just going to show you how to maneuver around the circle a little bit here. Now, if you have a negative degree, which it's going to ask you to do some of these, negative 135. So if you have your unit circle, 
A negative would start at 0, 1 and go clockwise around, and you'd figure out where the 135 degree angle would be. So this would be 180, back it up from that, 135 from this point would actually be 240. I'm sorry, not 240. This is um, 225 in the positive direction. So if you get a negative, you just start here and go clockwise. And if you have a number, like in some of these examples, they're more than 360. So just as example, I'm going to pick this one. Um, here's what you want to do. If you want to take the number, you could figure this out just by counting. I'm going to divide this by 360. So um, you guys can't see this on my calculator, but you've got 2,040. If you divide that by 360, this ends up being 5. 0.6 repeating, which is 5 and 2 thirds. Okay, so 5 times around 360. If I do 360 times 5, because it doesn't go in nicely, 360 times 5 is going to give me 1800. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do I'm going to do 2040 minus 1800, and that should tell me that we're trying to find the sine of 240 degrees. So if it goes more than all the way around the circle, figure out how many times. So this was not exact. So I took that and divided it by, or sorry, multiplied it by five, got that. And this will tell you in the realm of 360 where you're supposed to be in the circle. So take the angle, divide by 360. The, the whole number that it goes into, multiply it, and then take and subtract. That'll tell you where to end up on the circle. So then I want the sine of 240 for that question.